This session is all about developing some strategies to counteract the common rider problem of collapsing. So we're going to do this session on a stool or a firm chair. Take a moment as you come to sit on the chair to sense the contact of your sitting bones. You could even imagine you're in the saddle. And so you could imagine the weight on your right sitting bone to the right side of your saddle, the weight on your left sitting bone to the left side of your saddle. And of course, you can do this session actually ridden as well. Notice where your weight is right now, without adjusting, without changing. And then get a sense of your two shoulders. The right shoulder, the left shoulder. And notice, do the shoulders feel like they're level? Or is one shoulder a little higher up than the other? So in your mind's eye, track the distance between your right shoulder and the right side of your pelvis and your left shoulder and the left side of your pelvis. And notice which distance is greater and which is shorter. And then very softly and very gently, lift one sitting bone away from the chair and return it. And see which one do you choose? How easy is the movement? And how do you do this movement? There are a number of ways that you can lift your sitting bone. You can lift it with the muscles in your waist. You can push with your foot. You could swing your chest to one side and kind of drag the sitting bone up. Just three different ways of doing the same movement. And notice which one you choose. And after you've done that a few times and you can feel the quality of this, the ease and the range, switch to the side that you didn't choose first. Lift it a little bit away from the chair and return it. And go back and forth with this one, lifting and lowering. And feel what's your strategy on this side. Do you push with your foot? Do you use your muscles in your torso? Do you swing your chest? Some people might even lean their whole torso over and kind of pull the sitting bone up, a fourth option. And then pause with both sitting bones on the chair. And again, check in with your weight distribution. And now place your two hands on the side of your rib cage. And if this is difficult for you to place your hands like this, you can cross your arms and bring them around like that. But I'm going to have my hands placed on the ribs with the fingers forward. And lift one sitting bone, return it, and then lift the other sitting bone and return it and feel what happens underneath your hands. How do the two sides of your rib cage respond to this movement of laterally shifting your weight in one direction and then the other direction. You might notice that one side of your rib cage even feels a little bit more indented than the other and one side fuller. This is pretty common for all of us and it's really one of the main causes of that feeling of collapse in that you'll often get in a situation where one side seems like you can do nothing else but keep it uh, short and contracted and the other side is lengthened out and of course that makes a big change to how you distribute your weight. Come back to the center, let go of your hands and very easily lift one sitting bone and then the other sitting bone. Feel how that is now. And now try this. Take your hands and place them on top of your head. You can interlace your fingers and your elbows will be wide and start to alternate lifting one sitting bone and lifting the other sitting bone. And each time you lift one sitting bone, observe how the opposite elbow travels through space. 
So does it lift up? Does it move horizontally? Perhaps it tilts down. Maybe close your eyes to see if you can track how your two elbows move space through space to the right and to the left. It's almost inevitable that they will take a different pathway because for all of us, we are asymmetrical and we use ourselves differently on our dominant side and our non-dominant side. Come back to the center and you can rest your arms for a moment, but turn yourself so that you're face to the right, turn your pelvis, bring one knee forward, one knee back, and line yourself up so that your head, your sternum, and your pubic bone are all more or less over each other. Once again, take your hands on top of your head and with yourself turned to the right, start to shift your weight more to the right sitting bone, back to the center and to the left sitting bone. And in this twisted position, observe how your elbows respond. So as you lift your left sitting bone, does your right elbow go up or does it go down? As you lift your right sitting bone, does your left elbow go up or down? Can you track both elbows at the same time? Make sure that you're not pressing your head down and compressing your spine as you do this, so the weight of your hands is light. And then see, can you speed this up? So you're swinging your pelvis like a pendulum and everything above is adjusting in order to help you balance your weight as you shift it. How are you breathing? Are you doing this with the muscles in your waist? Or are you using your feet to push or a combination? Leave that, come back to the center, rest your hands and observe how your weight is distribu distributed now. Shift your weight a little to the right and to the left. Notice what's changed, what's got easier, lighter, more available. Maybe put your hands on your ribs. Feel how your ribs accommodate the movement of lifting one sitting bone and then the other. And then try this on the other side. So you're going to turn yourself to the left. Keep your nose, your sternum, your pubic bone all like one piece. Bring your hands onto your head. Get yourself or take a moment to get yourself feeling balanced. Your right knee will be forward, your left knee back. So the hip joints turn and then start to shift your weight. And now this time see as you lift your right sitting bone, can you lift your left elbow and draw an arc a little bit up the wall to the left of you? and then back down. And as you lift your left sitting bone, can your right elbow come up and draw an arc on the wall that it's facing so that you start to lengthen the side that you're not lifting. And you lengthen it from the shoulder to the pelvis so that you include the ribs on that side, opening up like an accordion. One side of your ribs opens, the other side closes. Check in with your breathing, find a speed, a rhythm, a range where you can breathe easily. Speed that up, speed it up. Find a speed that is uh, easy to manage and you don't get dysregulated. And then leave it, come back to the center Rest your hands, feel how your weight is distributed. A couple of times lift your right and then your left. Can you feel how your ribs bulge out and transfer across onto the side that you're waiting more? And that when you get this sense that as your pel uh, pelvis swings, your ribs are a little bit like a pendulum or if the accordion image works for you, and then pause. One more time, bring your hands on top of your head. 
and imagine that you're riding. Maybe you are riding. And if you're riding with both hands on top of your head, kudos to you. And now start to do the smallest movement that you can still feel of one sitting bone lifting and the other sitting bone lifting and feel how this movement arrives at the top of your torso, into your shoulders, into your elbows. Your head can stay level, but you can speed it up and sense how much adjustment you have in your ribs, your pelvis and your spine. And maybe you can imagine how having this type of movement available will help many of the gates when you next ride. Leave it, bring your arms down, sense your balance, your length, the distance between your right shoulder, the right side of your pelvis, your left shoulder, the left side of your pelvis, the shape of your two sides of your rib cage now, the length of your waist between your pelvis and your bottom ribs, and we will leave it there. <laughs>